The Good Liar. Read between the lies. Where it trees. Mainly the lie that this movie is anything but an ultra-feminist statement that all white heterosexual men are bad and all women are good. Even when it comes to lying. The Good Liar gives away its twist in the title. I figure it out within the first 30 minutes, and you probably will too. It's a 30-minute Twilight Zone slash Black Mirror episode. It's not a two-hour movie. Since the quote-unquote surprise is no longer a surprise, it's more about the journey and ultimately the final reckoning. It is, after all, a revenge movie. The journey there is slow, boring, and repetitious. Unfortunately, the final reckoning is a sledgehammer over the head wielded by a liberal feminist in a social justice fantasy land. Homosexuality, interracial marriage, ultra-feminism, rape, and even Nazis all make an appearance in the last 15 minutes. Looks like everyone's here. Let the social justice virtue signaling party begin. Here's some things I learned while watching this film. All 15-year-olds always know exactly what they are doing at all times and only make decisions based on sound judgment and logic. As long as they are boys. It's okay to be a criminal and steal from others if they stole from you. And if you are also better than them because you had, you know, a difficult childhood, you have gay friends, or you are gay, and or you have relatives and friends of any racial minority group. The only thing the good liar manages to hide from us until the very end are its social justice, leftist, anti-conservative themes. Be careful. It's deeper than it looks. You know what's not deeper than it looks? This film. It's exactly what it looks like. A virtue signaling liberal feminist's wet dream of revenge. The good liar keeps three stars for superb acting, loses two for unnecessary length, and loses five more for lying in wait until the end of the movie only to jump out and hit you over the head with a social justice sledgehammer. Three out of ten.